Have you or a loved one taken ibuprofen, aspirin, or leave and experienced longer than normal recovery times? Well, you probably aren't eligible for financial compensation, but there is some information about them that you should know about. Hello and welcome to Chemical Distractions. So what's the deal with ibuprofen, Aleve, and aspirin? And um, why are you sweating profusely? Well, it turns out it's actually very hot in here. It's summer right now and um, I don't have air conditioning. But all of these drugs fall under a category called NSAIDs, non-steroidal anti-inflammatory drugs. Now I know what you're thinking. If they're going to put this many freaking hyphens in it, why don't they just call it NADS? And I can only assume that's because NADS sounds dumb and NSAIDs sounds really cool. So we're gonna call them NSAIDs. <laughs> but I digress. NSAIDs work in the body basically in the way that the name entails. They are anti-inflammatory drugs in the, of the non-steroidal variety. One of the ways they stop this inflammation in the body is by inhibiting a protein with an even more unfortunate name, COX-1 and COX-2. Yes, that is a technical term made by professionals and you should take it very seriously. Sounds good, right? Inhibits COX-1 and COX-2. Those cause inflammation. Inflammation equals bad, right? Well, we used to think that. Some people actually thought that inflammation was bad, but very quickly we started to learn that inflammation is sometimes bad, but a lot of the times inflammation is actually good. It turns out that inflammation is actually our body's natural response to damage, and it turns out that it actually often plays a very important role in recovering from injuries. For example, there's evidence out there showing that COX-2, which is commonly blocked by drugs like ibuprofen and Aleve, plays an important role in the growth of bones. Mm, I just felt one of my bones grow. <laughs> this bone growth is a natural process that bones go through when they heal themselves from broken bones or fractured bones. In this study, one group of participants with fractured bones took NSAIDs and the other group took something like Tylenol, which is not an NSAID, it just sort of blocks the pain receptors in your brain. After a year of taking these drugs, they took a look at the participants in the study and they found that the control group who had taken things like Tylenol had an effective recovery rate of 94%. Compared to those taking NSAIDs like ibuprofen, where they found an effective recovery rate of only 48%. Well, that's just broken bones. Like, what about other stuff? Well, one of the most common reasons that people in America take NSAIDs is for things like lower back pain. In a study of lower back pain sufferers that was conducted similarly to the last one, they found that those taking NSAIDs for back pain were 76% more likely to develop chronic or long-term back pain than those taking Tylenol or placebo. In fact, the studies go on and on from there. There's studies on muscle injury, joint injury, soft tissue injury, I could go on and on. Not to mention that use of NSAIDs has also been linked with gastrointestinal bleeding, higher blood pressure, dehydration and rashes. Now Tylenol isn't free from problems either, it's got its own risks as many medicines do. It, it has some risks with things like liver damage. On top of that, many studies have shown that Tylenol doesn't usually work as well as NSAIDs for certain types of pain and I can definitely test to that. I've I've noticed that. Funnily enough, shortly before creating this video, I actually threw my back out, making the terrible, terrible mistake of walking like a normal human being. Yeah, no clue. But anyways, I have had run-ins with back problems in the past, and I used to take a leave for it. And my back would continue to hurt on and off with the leave sort of for months sometimes. And it was a pretty unpleasant experience, so you know what? I decided to try and take some Tylenol for my pain. And surprisingly, at the beginning, it sucked. It was, it was really not good. The Tylenol did not relieve the pain in the same way that the Aleve did. I think that the Aleve worked a lot better for pain. But after a few days, I started to feel a lot better. And then after, it's been like two weeks now, I don't really have much pain at all. And that's surprising because normally I'll, I'll have a lot of back pain for a very long time. But, I'm feeling better. Now, obviously this is not a scientific study. This is anecdotal evidence at best. So, you know, take it with a grain of salt. This is just my personal experience. But personally, I think I'm gonna try and take Tylenol for back pain like that more often. And while we're on the subject of self-medicating, uh, let me just say a lot of the studies that are out there on this have been studies on animals. They've been on rabbits and um, humanized rats, whatever the hell abomination that is, whatever. 
But there is a lot of evidence coming out in these human trials, like I mentioned, and the dots are starting to be connected. So if you have any questions about what medications might be right for you and your types of pain, talk to your doctor and do your own research. This is not medical advice. Don't take medical advice from turds on the internet. I was just pointing out some studies that I thought were interesting. So please share this video with anybody who you think may get some use out of this information and comment, subscribe, do that kind of stuff because it helps boost the algorithm. And uh, yeah, please do that quickly before Big Pharma strikes me down and puts me in Big Pharma hell for all of the terrible sins that I've committed against their flawless reputation. So thank you for watching and goodbye.